Let's finish refining the anticipation to the creature's attack. So we don't have much to do to clean up our animation. Let's go ahead and get started here. What I'd like to do is go ahead and focus on the arms first. And then what we could do is go ahead and refine the body a bit and we can then work on our legs. But let's go ahead and get right to it. So starting with that right arm, you can see how it kind of slides forward way too fast. We'll need to go ahead and head over to our curve editor to start doing a bit of cleanup work. Let's now focus on our y-axis, which is the axis that allows the arm to move forward and back. Let's also grab our move tool in case we need to quickly add a pose. All right, so taking a look, I'll just go ahead and zoom in a bit. I like to hold down Control alt and the middle mouse button. And when we use that, we can do an interactive zoom in or out, just so we can take a look at the F-curve more closely. So you can see, the reason why the arm is as snappy as it is is simply because we have this pose on frame 7 that locks the arm down in that position. We want to make it appear as if he's truly pushing himself back, so we need to go ahead and take that key on frame 7 and we want to go ahead and just start dropping that so the arm starts to slide forward. Great. I'd also recommend going to view and turning on interactive update so as we start to move this key we can see the change on the fly. Alright, so that's looking much nicer than it did before. Great. Let's do the same thing for the left arm next. We'll go to our position Y and where it plants right here on frame 10. Let's go ahead and take that key. We'll hold down control and we'll start to just drag that down. By holding down control that's going to lock our movement either in value or in time. So as we start to drag the key up and down while we hold down control, notice we lock the key so it cannot move in time. We can't move it left or right, only up and down. When we start to hold down control and drag left and right, we can't move up and down. Alright, so it's just a way of locking down that key a bit more. All right, great. So if we were to go ahead and take a look at the push-off now, and we go ahead and play this back, it looks much nicer than it did before. All right, great. Now going back to the right arm, let's go ahead and take a look at its timing when it pushes off. I'll go back to the, the Y position track. And I'd almost like to go ahead and take this key on frame 10 and delay it. So let's go ahead and hold down control and we'll just go ahead and drag that one frame over to our right. That way it happens a little bit later so it doesn't look so snappy. Great. And then again we can do the same thing for the left arm. We'll go to our position Y. We'll go ahead and take this key, hold down control and just drag it down just one more frame much better. Now how about the the Y track, or excuse me, the Z track, what about that? Because right now the hold looks a little bit off. So let's go ahead and focus on that. We'll go ahead and hold down Control alt and start to drag with the middle mouse button so we can get a closer view of our Z track. And you can see why the motion looks a bit off. We have a weird hold here that happens on frame 24. We can look at our key stats to take a close look at where this frame is. So with the key selected, I'll go ahead and actually remove that key on 24. We'll go ahead and grab the key on 27. We'll hold down shift and we'll drag the end tangent up and that's going to create more of a hold so as the leg comes down, it'll come down more forceful. Great. All right, so we're getting some better timing there in the left arm. I'd like to do the same thing for the right arm. We'll go ahead and grab the position Z track. And again, we have this weird hold here that we'll need to clean up. So let's go ahead and take this key on 22, delete that. 
we'll go ahead and take the key on 15. Let's hold down control and drag that so it's on frame 17, so it's kind of centered. And then we'll go ahead and take the key on 25. Let's go ahead and hold down shift and we'll drag up our tangent handle so that we can create more of a hold here. By holding down shift that breaks the handle. We can learn techniques like this in Introduction to Animation in 3ds Max. If you want to unify this again, you can simply go ahead and first set this back to Auto to kind of flatten this out, and then you can go ahead and right-click on your key to get to your stats, go to Advanced, and here's where we get to lock down that tangent. We'd want to essentially lock with this option here. And with that unlocked, of course, now we can move each side independently. Alright, great. So we'll have our hold and then he'll kind of stomp down. We'll go ahead and play this back to take a look. Sweet. So this is truly coming together very well. Let's go ahead and move forward now. So the arms look really nice. Let's go ahead and start to focus more on the body. Let's make sure it flows up nicely. So with the Center of gravity selected, we'll go ahead and right click and go back to our curve editor and we'll take a look at our position Z track. So you can see by looking at the function curve here that there's a bit of a pause in the upward movement of the the character's body. You can see how it moves up nicely until we get to the next sequence and then it starts to kind of slow down a bit. So let's go ahead and fix that so we have this really nice flowing motion. So here's what we can do. We can go ahead and basically take this keyframe here on 60 and we can go ahead and delete that. We'll go ahead and take the keys on 70 all the way down to about frame 100 here. Let's go ahead and lift those up a bit more. Just to bring up his high position a bit more. I'll go ahead and take the key on frame 70. Let's go ahead and hold down control and we'll go ahead and start dragging that over to our our left to speed up its timing. So you can see here now we're starting to get a better flow So we go from one sequence to the next. We can now go ahead and take a look at the key here on frame 51. I'll hold down control and just lift that up a bit more. So again we get this better flow now when we go from one sequence to the next. Alright sweet. Now it might be a bit distracting when we go ahead and take a look at this snap in the global control. So after we've animated that object, here's what we could do. We could basically go ahead and take the control object, go to the motion panel, let's go ahead and find the position list, and watch. We can go to the zero position list here, and we could essentially just zero that out. We can go to the weight. I'll go ahead and turn off auto key when I, when I do this. But we'll go ahead and right click just to make sure that there is no movement. And once we're ready to bring that back, when we're ready to, let's say, export the animation out, or if we do need to see that movement again, we'd simply set this zero controller here back to 100%. So it's kind of a way of muting that controller. So I'll go down again, just right-click to zero that back out. And now we can truly have an idea of the flow of the animation as he lifts himself up. Great stuff. Okay, so once we've managed to do that, the next thing we can do is basically start cleaning up the legs a bit. So from here, what I'd like to do is make sure that they almost feel like they plant a bit better. So let's go ahead and do this one leg at a time so it's not so overwhelming. We'll go ahead and turn back on Auto Key. And this first leg that kind of hits on the right side. That's happening way too slow, so let's go ahead and make sure that we bring that down sooner. And we'll have that delayed from the right arm coming down. So that happens on about frame 4, so we can go just a few frames after on about frame 6. We'll take this keyframe on 10 and we'll go ahead and drag that down to 6. Great. From here, we can go ahead and make sure that it's going to remain on the floor for a few more frames before it comes back up as he pushes himself back. So as we've done before, let's go ahead and hold down 
shift and we'll go ahead and drag this key from frame 6 over to about say frame 9. Now we just need it to slide forward a bit so it looks like he's pushing himself back before it comes up again. Great. Let's say we now go ahead and take the keyframe on 20. Let's go ahead and drag that back to about frame 16 or so so it comes back up a bit sooner and then we need it to plant again. And we need to make sure that we hold this pose on 30. So let's go ahead and take the key on 30 and we'll go ahead and slide that down several frames to fix the timing that the leg comes down. So I've brought it to about 22. Let's play this back and see if we like that timing. All right, cool. So this looks pretty nice. I like the force at which it comes down. We do need to fix the arc in that leg. So let me go ahead and show you a really cool technique for correcting your arcs. You don't always have to go to the motion panel and turn on trajectories from here. If we're underneath parameters, we could actually just alt right click to access our animation quad menu and turn on show trajectories. So that's just another way of doing that. And now we can take a look at the arc and it needs some work. So let's say we go ahead and start cleaning that up. We'll go to about frame 13. I'll go ahead and just move that forward. Take a look. Already we're starting to get a better result. And it doesn't have to be a perfect arc at all. We need to add a bit of dirt to the arc so it looks more lifelike. We shouldn't aim for perfect arcs, if you will. They should have a bit of an imperfection because that is what happens in real life. So when we play this back already, this is starting to look much better. Now when that leg comes down, we need to make sure it happens a bit sooner to show its force. So instead of having it happen on about frame 60, let's go to make sure it happens much sooner, perhaps on about frame 54. So boom, it hits, and then the creature lifts his body up. Great. I'd almost like to delay the time at which it starts to come up so it looks like he's pushing his body up and then the light comes up. So let's go to frame 40 and bring that key to about 45. Let's go ahead and play that back to take a look at the timing. That looks cool. I'd almost like to delay that just a few more frames so let's go ahead and bring that to about 47. So he comes up, and then that leg comes up. We have something that looks more lifelike. And then to fix the arc, of course, we could just go in and, let's say, adjust the upward movement. We can go to about 49 and kind of lift that up a bit. And there we go. Very nice. All right, so our animation is truly starting to look more lifelike. Again, we could just go through and take a look at the other legs here. So as the right front leg comes down, we have the right leg at the back coming up. And then we can make sure that it hits faster on the floor. So we can go to about 15, take the key on frame 20 and move it over to 15. So here's what we end up with. A harder hit. And it shows weight. All right, super cool. Now, if you'd like to take a look at the trajectory on this object, you can go ahead and alt right click and choose Show Trajectories. And then remember to go to the object that you want to hide the trajectory of. Then just go ahead and alt right click and click on Show Trajectories yet again to hide that arc. All right, sweet. So, by this trajectory here, looking at that right leg, you might want to just go ahead and take the keyframe on frame 10 and translate that forward a bit more to polish that arc a bit. All right, very nice. Now there might be a little bit of a slide, but remember when we play this back, when we go to our global control, again I'll go ahead and turn off auto key, and when we go ahead and set our weight back to 100%, as long as it kind of looks like it works, then that's just fine. There's going to be a little bit of sliding with an action like this, but as long as it looks like he's actually moving back, then we're just fine. All right, sweet. So everything is coming together very well, and that's basically what we'd want to do for 
the other side, we'd want to kind of offset the legs just a bit just so that it doesn't happen at the same time, but we still want to reflect that, that push off. And then remember when we need to check our arcs, it's just a matter of selecting the object, alt right clicking, and choosing show trajectory. So if we don't quite like the arc in, let's say, the arm, well, we can go ahead and clean that up a bit. Remember, it's a good idea to go to the global control, go ahead and zero out the weight of the zero position controller before you go in and tweak your arc because take a look there was a jump before but now we can start to get a better idea of how the arc truly looks and then once you're finished you can go ahead and take your control object here and choose show trajectories to go ahead and hide that arc alrighty so that's basically the process for going in and kind of cleaning up the animation and again, if you need to refer to the final animation file just to get an idea of your arcs and timing and things like that, feel free to take a look at that. But I just wanted to give you an idea. Now, I'd like to go ahead and kind of finish up by showing you how to transition from this to the creature's fall. So we'll go ahead and begin that in the following lesson.